on the same lines you can train a dpm detector for any other object for example this is the main detector for the bicycle and this is the detector for the individual components of the bicycle and uh, this one would, uh, would have done just fine if both the wheels of the bicycle were on the ground but since the cycle is inclined at a different angle the dpm part detector will kick in and will be able to individually identify the rear and the front portions of the wheels then the frame and the handle separately so this is how the dpm detector can be helpful even if you are trying to detect any other object and this is a detector for the front portion uh, frontal portion of the bicycle and uh, two dpm detectors for humans probably this in the standing position and uh, this in some other pose maybe sitting and two different detectors for the bottle we have already seen the detectors for the car this for the cat etc so in this way you can train dpm detectors for uh, all other objects these are some of the results of uh, detection this is for the person car then this is for the horse sofa we can see one error in the detection these are two cats actually but to the computer it looks like a sofa so it detected as a sofa and uh, let's look at the the overall results for pascal voc 2010 uh, dataset this is the mean average precision i'm getting with uh, the dpm and afterwards there was some uh, variation of dpm that was presented called set dpm which managed to get up to 40% accuracy so this completes our uh, discussion on all the classical computer vision techniques in the next video we'll have a short review of uh, what all we have uh, explored until now with respect to the classical computer vision techniques